What is up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Putty and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on a very important subject. This is inspired by um, one of my friends called Reese. His link is in the description, his YouTube channel is in the description. He's doing a, a Hitman Asp Solution Let's Play. Definitely something you should check out. But this is just a um, quick tutorial that, with something he struggles with. struggled with. Now I've luckily helped him out. And I hope to help a lot more more of you out because this is obviously something that a lot of people have problems with and so I'm here to just make that all go away, make sure that's all cleared up. I have one very important thing about Photoshop to talk to you guys about today. It's a very important um, tutorial um, that shows you one of the most important aspects of Photoshop and an aspect that not a lot of people you know, get to use because it's very hidden amongst the uh, various tools so I thought I'd just show you guys how to use it. We're going to be using the Paint Bucket tool. So, when you start up Photoshop, this is my version of Photoshop, I'm not sure um, what type of Photoshop it is, but you're going to you're gonna be see, looking at something similar, and hopefully the icons will be similar if not the same. So when you start up Photoshop, this isn't going to be the paint bucket tool, this thing here. It's going to be the gradient tool, it's going to look like that. So when you start up Photoshop and you're looking for the paint bucket tool, you need to look for that gradient tool. Once you've found the gradient tool, you want to click and hold on it. Hold down your mouse until this menu appears. Then you want to move down to Paint Bucket Tool and release your mouse. That is step one to finding and using the Paint Bucket Tool. So, I should explain some of the uses of the Paint Bucket Tool. It's very varied. <laughs> very varied. It's a, It's got a lot of uses to it. But one of the most important ones, the one that is most well known, is its ability to fill things in. So, take a transparent background. Let's move our color up to white. And we click on the transparent background with our color selected as white. I'll go through that again. When your color is selected as white and you've got the paint bucket tool selected, you can click on a transparent background and it will turn white. Now you can't you don't just do this with a transparent background. It can actually work with anything of the same color. So let's take this white background and turn it red. Brownish. There you go. Not only does it do things like backgrounds, but you can also turn little things into whatever color you want. So let's take this rectangle tool. I know it's not the paint bucket tool. I understand you guys coming out of your comfort zone, moving from the paint bucket tool that you're used to into the rectangle tool could be dangerous. I understand that. But I think in order to fully demonstrate the uses of this paint bucket tool, we must use the rectangle tool. So just for a second, let's switch to the rectangle tool. We're going to make a rectangle. It's going to be a green rectangle, okay? There you go. A green, very eyesore-ish, as I like to use when I'm suggesting improvements to Marshall's thumbnails. Very eyesore-ish rectangle. Now, if you would like to use the paint bucket tool on a shape created in Photoshop, you will have to first click on the shape, and it will give you a quick warning. Uh, I don't exactly know what it means, but it appears every time you would like to fill in a shape using the paint bucket tool. And uh, it asks you if you'd like to do something. I always press OK. It never seems to be a problem for me. So if you'd like to, I don't know, change this this green rectangle into a red rectangle, for, for example. As you can see, the, the green rectangle is being very uh, annoying. I found this problem in my previous take of this recording, as the green rectangle does not like to change. Uh, sorry, the blue rect the blue things do not like to change. Seems like the green has the same problem, so we'll make a white rectangle instead. And we will try to change it into a black rectangle, for example. So again, just click OK. And there you go. You can change rectangles into any colour that you like. Now this just does, doesn't work on simple shapes like rectangles and you know green so rectangles or backgrounds. It can also work on very complex shape. Let's see if we can uh, demonstrate that for you today. Again, you don't have to know these things. In Photoshop, you just need to know about the paint bucket tool. I mean, like for example, arrows. A white arrow here. You see? Now we could use the paint bucket tool to change the arrow into black. Same same process. There you go. This has just been a quick tutorial on the paint bucket tool. Definitely something not a lot of people know about. Um, something I thought I'd um, talk about today because it's, it's, it's a very important part of Photoshop that not a lot of people use because it's so difficult to use the paint bucket tool. 
and find the paint bucket tool. And I think it's definitely something Photoshop need to improve on in any uh, versions they may release in the future. It's definitely something I have told them about in our recent meetings. Um, you know, the big wigs of Photoshop definitely invite me over every now and then to talk about problems with their product. And, you know, it's something that they've got a problem with, is hiding the paint bucket tool, as it is one of the greatest tools in editing history, yet it's so difficult to find. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And, again, I hope this was helpful. Please comment any suggestions you have to keeping track of the paint bucket tool. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.